ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Mook, and of course, Captain Stink. Oh, she found a grasshopper already. Today we're in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, just outside of this random set of woods behind me, working in a shed on an Oldsmobile F85 that has been sitting right there for a number of years. We're going to see if we can get this thing running and driving, so without further ado, let's begin. So like I said, we're going to be working on this Oldsmobile F85. If you know anything about these cars, you'll know the reason that we're here. They're very unique for one reason. These are the first cars to ever have an aluminum V8 engine. Assuming that's all original, that's a 215 Oldsmobile aluminum V8. We're going to see if we can make it run again. I see a ratchet shifter and an oil gauge. And these are like original keystone rims. I think those are worth more than what we paid for the car. Someone might have had this sucker hot rodded up. Supporting that theory, there's uh, T-handles on the uh, valve covers and a four barrel. And I doubt these would have came with a four barrel. Oh heck, there's no uh, water pump pulley. Oh, the headliner's falling down. Is it? Oh, not that bad. Split open right here. <coughs> Nothing. Look where it reverses on the shift pattern. It's the last one. <laughs> Oil change in November of 86. Heck. With 5W30. I love that it says F85 right there. Yeah, this dash is really cool. This interior is pretty good. See any keys around in there? That's a no. Well, without keys, there's no getting into the trunk. So I'm sure that holds plenty of secrets. Uh, no rear license plate to check a date, unfortunately. Looks like it came from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, so believe it or not, it's spent its whole life in Iowa. So we actually bought this a couple weeks ago, but we had a whole bunch of stuff going on that we had to travel for, and I don't remember the story of the car very well. I know it's been sitting for a long time. Uh, one thing I do remember is, as you can see, the uh, fender's been replaced up front, and there's these scrapes where the door handles have been, like, ground off. He said, uh... Either him or his buddies or whoever owned it at one point was goofing around in the car in Ames. And they took a turn too hard and apparently tipped the whole car up on its side and scraped the door handles off. <laughs> and I'm assuming they just put it back down and took off again, so... Also, I found an old, like, school pass. School oh, parking, parking pass. pass? What school is it? Jefferson High School. Oh, I think that's Des Moines area. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this interior is pretty damn nice. Like, actually really nice. Headliner's coming down, like Moot mentioned, but other than that, I'm liking it. It's so simple. And it's got a nice stabby steering wheel, so if you crash, you just get split right open by a, a splitting mall. You get death. Yeah, <laughs> extra death. Well, Moot, should we uh, get some tools and start digging into this thing? Yes. Let's do it. All right, it's time to get our tools out and get to work. But before we get too far into this project, we're going to talk about the sponsor of today's video. Decked. So as you guys know, here on the channel, we are all about organization and keeping everything in its home and having it easily accessible at any time. And that's what these guys are all about. I don't think I honestly really need to say much more, but I have a lot left to say, so I'll keep talking. <laughs> DECT makes organizing, accessing, protecting, and securing everything you need easy. We put this in a few days ago and we've been using it for revivals all week. This is everything we would previously have rolling around in the back of the truck, now secured in a home, in a weatherproof container, out of the elements. Each of DECT's two full length drawers can carry up to 200 pounds of whatever it is that you've got. And they roll out waist high, giving you easy access to all of your tools and all of your gear. This one's most important, so it goes on top. Besides the two full length drawers, there's four ammo cans, one in each corner to absolutely utilize all of the bed space available for your truck. Now you might be thinking, okay, well that's great. Now I have drawers in the back of my truck, but that's eating up all of my ability to haul stuff. Ah, it's actually not. Decked is fully rated for a 2,000 pound load capacity on top of their drawer systems. So you can still easily throw an engine up there and drive around with no problems whatsoever. Let's talk about another aspect, security. If my tailgate is up and locked, 
you can't get to a single thing in the back of my truck that is in my deck system. Unless this sucker's open, no one's touching a thing back there. DECT also offers a full line of storage organizational accessories like various toolboxes, bags, cargo ties, and other handy items for maximum efficiency both of your space and time. Added bonus, your Tang Tools portable toolkit fits right in there with no modification. So if you guys want to maximize your time and space, click the link in the description or go to DECT.com slash JYD for free shipping on your DECT drawer system. I'm actually really liking this. This might stay. This is this is good. It is so freaking hot out today. It's like it's only like 95 on paper, but it's horrible. It's 90. It's only 90? Yeah. My ass. It's like 115. Anyway, in the middle of us filming our deck integration, the uh, owner stopped by and dropped off the keys and all of this stuff, which is a random air filter, which I don't know if this is what car it's for. If anyone knows what that's for, let me know in the comments. Ye old keys. And this bag of goodies. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that's a two-door, but yeah, it's a Cutlass F85. So this is from the previous owner. Uh, as of right now, we do not have a title, and this is my best bet, is to find a guy named Bill, who did all of this work. This is receipts for the car. For years. <laughs> 93 is the latest date I'm seeing. Overhaul gasket set, ring set, main bearing set, rod bearing set. Don't know if this is a quote or a receipt. Engine might have been redone at some point. If this is the right car, they uh, they put a trans cooler in, torque converter, a trunk mount battery. America's lowest priced car with an aluminum V8. Wasn't it like the only one? Uh, well I guess the Buick had it as well. Oh here's your motor. Oh, this is the uh, this is a turbocharged application. This car is not, but this would be the Jetfire. So this is an old Jetfire brochure. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That is cool in and of itself. Look at the the turbocharger uh, gauge. Oh, cool. Economy or power, <laughs> you get one or the other. Can't have both. <laughs> On the back, <laughs> there's an ad for a Galaxy. A 406 Galaxy suddenly goes zow and vanishes. Uh, the previous owner said that he wrote up this page, which is all the uh, totals for all the receipts the guy ever spent on this car, and it was $5,200 in parts. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's kept every receipt ever. Is there a second one in here? Am I seeing stuff? What? <laughs> That's just for you, Kevy. There it is. That's no. what we want. Announcing the first major toothpaste advance since fluoride. Now, Ipana has hexafluoride. See, that was back when toothpaste was good. It still had lead in it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go put these in the truck and then let's see what we can find inside the car. Alright, let's see what's in this sucker. Oh, hell yeah, we're in. Holy cow, there's a lot of stuff back here. He wasn't kidding. Original valve covers, it's chilling over there. That's probably an original two barrel intake, if I had a guess. So, I think this really was swapped to a four barrel. I can't imagine they would have came with a four barrel. Bunch of random brackets and bits and pieces and parts. And God, I hope those aren't supposed to be on the car. My piston. Piston. Piston that had a bad time. Possible the motor's been redone. It's looking more and more true. Here's some fans, which is good because we don't have one of them. Here's a fuel pumpy, another fuel pumpy. Ooh, this, you can have this one, Mook. A weapon? Yep. Please don't use it on me. No promises. I looked up the uh, ad earlier because I'd forgotten like what year this was, and I reread the description, and it said 215 V8, been sitting for years, no carb or starter. I totally forgot about that. So, it has a carb, I know that. I don't know if it has a starter. I have no idea. That's a starter, and it's broken. Yeah, good news and bad news. The receipts were correct. The battery has been relocated. It's not up here, it's somewhere in the trunk. Also, it does have a trans cooler. It's plumbed in and everything. It's actually plumbed through the trans cooler and the radiator, so double cooling. 
The bad news, however, is that there is no starter. I see the wires just dangling down there, so we uh, we need to get a starter in this thing before we can see if it even runs at all. And I don't know if it's a special starter or not, but regardless, there's no way in hell I can get to it where it's sitting right now. So the chances of making this run out here are pretty much none, but I think this car's cool enough and has enough of a mystery around it where this could be a totally built motor or something that I want to go through the effort to take this all the way back to the shop and continue to work on it and solve that mystery. So at this point, let's go get the trailer hooked up, load this thing up and take it over to the shop and resume there. This is one of those that it's unique so let's do it right. Alright, we're back with the trailer, got the winch hooked up, let's see if we can get this thing to come out of its grave. Like I mentioned earlier, the guy said it's been sitting right here for 10 years. Uh, the only paperwork we could find was for 93, was the last receipts. That's why I would say this thing probably last ran in like 95, which puts us at about 25, 26 years since this thing's probably been on the road. So let's see if these tires hold air. Seems to hold enough air that we should be able to make that work. Let's go do the other side. Alright, winch is hooked up. Let's see what happens. No idea what gear it's in and the uh, shifter's not quite hooked up to where I can make a difference anyway. So let's just hope it's neutral because it got pushed there at one point. The trunk closes and the hood doesn't really yet. And it's arguably the same aerodynamics front and rear, so it's going to be just fine. Oh, the damn exhaust. Kick that front end up in the air. Should be good to go. Oh, are you kidding me? It's like an eighth of an inch. <laughs> it's not about like that much. Any trailer companies out there? I need a tilt bed. Call me. Email me, but get it. All right, it's hot. That's good enough. Let's take this thing to the car wash and see what we got. By the way, before we leave, let's take a look at this thing. It seems to be a shortened van chassis with a uh, bed on it, so that's pretty badass. I think it's a Chateau trim level inside. Yeah, right there it says Chateau, so. This thing's pretty bitchin'. Anyone's got one of these that's like still together, let me know. Uh, shoot me an email, junkyarddigs1 at gmail.com. That would be badass with a diesel in it. That'd be one hell of a tow rig. Either way, this sucker's loaded up. Close the tonneau cover on the truck, and we will head back to the shop. Yeah, it's a, it's a sweaty one out today. Let's go get this thing cleaned up. All right, here we are at the car wash. Let's go ahead and get some suds on this thing and see how it comes out.
I keep going on the wash cycle here, I'll bring you guys along for the rinse later. Yeah, that thing looks pretty good wet. Let's get it outside and see what it looks like. There it is. Just about matches the truck, really. A lot of that sheen's gonna wear off as soon as the water dries up. Yeah, you can see it right there. Until that would get buffed, it won't look this shiny. The water fills in all the oxidization on the surface and essentially makes a smooth surface again. Let's go see if we can get ourselves a starter and get this up on the lift and go through the procedure to make it run. Okay, so obviously before we can move forward, we need a starter. And if there's anywhere I'm gonna find a Buick 215 starter, it's probably gonna be off of a Rover motor uh, imported in the US, not so much an actual 215 because this is the first one I've ever seen. Fortunately, I know a guy who might have one of those. This is Steve, my buddy from This Week with Cars. And we're about to harvest a starter off of, what even is this thing? This is a AC Asica Bristol. That's a, got an aluminum V8 in it. Is this a very sought after car? Or? Yeah, this is pretty rare. This is a two plus two. One of the first two plus twos, the Aston Martin DB24 was its sister car. Oh, they came out at the same time. Don't tell me this is like your most expensive car. Yeah, this is well, <laughs> one of the more expensive cars in this room. Great. <laughs> We're about to steal the starter and put it on a $600 piece of shit. Okay, yeah, let's do this. There we go. We got her out. It's uh, a bit greasy under there, so I'll just try to get all my grease and sweat off the poor thing. But we'll take this over to our shop, see if it fits. Uh, get a new one ordered up and then probably just hand you the new one that'd make more sense than putting it in the other car So well, thank you very much Steve. I'll uh, see you in a couple days. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, I'm gonna need that luck All right, we're back in the shop. I got the starter out from Steve's car. Thank you very much, Steve Mook's supposed to be here. I have no idea where she is. I just got here. Oh my god <laughs> You're so lucky the camera was on Hi, Luke. Hello. That was pretty good. Thank you, Dex, for the huge box. <laughs> Coda and I love it. Should we uh, get a starter in this thing? See if it spins over or anything? Yes. Let's do it. All right, so we've got the car up in the air. I've been looking under it for a couple minutes, and a few very interesting things immediately uh, pop out to me here. Actually, the one I just noticed right now is this exhaust pipes. It's uh, seen better days. <laughs> It's a little pinched, but uh, this motor is exceptionally clean. It's there's very little grease on it, if any at all. It also has new hardware in the engine mounts, so I would not be surprised if this has been out of the car. But moving back a little bit, things get really interesting really quick. This big ring right here and this second ring right here are not factory. That right there is an adapter plate. There's one on the flex plate and one from the transmission to the block, which means that this is not the right transmission. And in fact, if you look at the shape of the pan, you will be able to tell that that right there is a TH350. These cars came with the Roto Hydromatic 2 speed, if I'm correct, and that is a 3 speed, which explains why there's a ratchet shifter on the floor of the car. It's because the original shifter would not move the right amount of notches for this transmission to be put into the correct gears. Also explains all this debauchery and pieces of angled metal back here. These are uh, to make a trans mount, not where it's supposed to be. So, someone has swapped a three speed into this car, swapped a four barrel on it, set up dual exhaust and a remote rear battery. So I dare say this car must have been a sleeper or something because it's got some hot rod and done to it. Let's go ahead and get something on the crank pulley and see if this sucker spins over. As of right now, I really don't know. All right, so usually we get this done way earlier in the series, but we've kind of been taking our time on this one because I wasn't sure if we'd be able to get a starter. Let's see if this thing turns over. Oh, come on. Oh, there it goes. Oh yeah, she spins. She'll run. Oh, yeah, it feels pretty good, actually. I'm gonna do two circles to make sure our valve train and the pistons and everything move just fine. 
And then we'll go ahead and get a starter on this. And get one step closer to seeing what happens when we hit the key. All right, tightening up the last bolt to our starter. Probably, arguably, easiest starter install I've ever done. Uh, I just went boop and it was done. That was it. Very accessible in this car. Unlike the uh, one at Steve's shop, which is a, you would imagine that because that was like a hand built car. So they probably weren't exactly worried too much about serviceability. Okay. Now, here's what I'm scared of this ring right here, the big one adapts the transmission to the engine block, which means everything's back farther. So to get the starter to line up with the flywheel, you have to put a second ring between the torque converter and the flywheel and flex plate, whatever. The concerning part is, is something a little bit wrong, and that's why the old starter had the nose cone snapped off, or did that happen somewhere outside of the car or for some other reason? I don't know. Only way we're gonna find out is to put power to this and see if it survives. Please don't break, you're really expensive. All right, Mugerator, let's get it. You called for muscles, here I am. <laughs> Let me get this heavy piece of the out of the way for you. Okay, thank you. So, we have to get everything out of the trunk now because the battery sits right around yonder and we need one of those for the cranks. I noticed also while I was under there that this car has an alternator now, and I'm pretty sure it would have came with a generator, so someone's done a lot of work. Is your steering wheel? That is the original air cleaner. As you can see, it says Rocket 8 on it. We're looks gonna like, hang on to that. Looks like you're supposed to make spaghetti in that thing. Okay. A horn. No, 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 no reason for panic, reason for excitement. Everybody knows that horns out in the wild are very terrifying. No! <laughs> <laughs> this right here is uh, three of the original tires in here with the hubcaps. They actually paint match the car. Here's that other starter that's broken. This looks like it had a bad toy. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I'm a little scared as to why. A grill just full of dipsticks and wiper blades and everything. Is that a cam? It's a cam shed. Oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> so there's a chance this sucker's got a, a hotter cam in it. Here's a smiley face. <laughs> Pepsi box, you're coming with me. Potentially. Looks like there's bearings and timing gears and stuff in it. Oh, wiper blades! Just yeah, those are all uh, rod bearings and there's a set of piston rings. This is probably everything that was on those receipts. Okay, so we just pulled the intake out and it was not at all what I was anticipating. Now I know why that air cleaner is so weird. They like bolted to the intake. That's freaking, that's something. I'm kind of glad that's not on there anymore. <laughs> So is Coda. Apparently. Jeez. She's got a poop. I'm coming, Coda! All right, we're all vacuumed out. As you can see, right about yonder, it's where the battery's been relocated to. The trunk floor looks fantastic. Besides, we've got kerbonked once upon a time. Let's uh, get a battery in there and see what's what. We got our hood off. So we can access everything a bit better. I'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get this out of our way so that I know we're not eating a whole bunch of shit when we try to crank this over. Oh. It's got oil, it looks like it's been red, but it's pretty fresh, so that's good. I'm not too worried about having to do a break in then. Although at the same time, I, I don't see an ignition coil or really anything. Easy. All right, our battery's hooked up. Let's just see if we have power first. Oh, headlights. This is the horn button. Check that out. <laughs> meep, meep. Lower motor. I'm sure this thing doesn't work. 
Okay, the most important part of all, will the starter engage and not explode? Come on, little buddy, you can do it. Sweet! I wanted to crank it until I saw oil pressure, but I, I didn't see anything, so. Okay, so we have an engine that spins over really nice. Uh, the next step is going to be get spark to it. I see that there's uh, no ignition coil, but it does have those nice steel braided spark plug wires. So let's go ahead and set ourselves up an ignition system. Hey, move! You stop! No! All right, it's time for some of the good stuff. Some ignition system diagnosis. This ignition system was missing a coil. I went and stole one off of a truck over here in the shop and hooked it up. Hooking these up is easy as hell. Get your condenser, make sure it's got a ground, it's bolted to something, and put the other side to the positive. Take your positive wire from the ignition loom and hook it to the positive or battery side of the coil. Take the wire that comes from the distributor and hook it to the other side of the coil and then just plug the thing in. One thing you're gonna need to verify is if the positive wire is getting power when the key is on. And as you can see, it do be. Now from this point, we're gonna wanna see if we have our test light come on while hooked to the positive and negative side of the coil. As you can see, it don't be, and that could be because the points are open. To test that, I'll crank the engine, and we should see that light flash if it's working. As you can tell, we do not see that light flash, so it ain't working. Which means we do not have a ground for the coil and the circuit is open. If I go to a known well ground, our light comes on and we're good to go. So, like I just said, that tells us we don't have a ground to the coil. And that ground comes from the points in the distributor. So, we're going to pop that distributor cap off, sand those up, and we should be good to go. Make sure you turn your key off when you're working with distributors and ignition systems because there's a good chance you'll get shocked when you're cleaning those points if you leave it on. There's also a chance that your coil will get really hot and go kaboom if you leave your key on for too long. Alright, let's pop this sucker off quick. There we go. Set that over there, out of my way. It should be a new cap and rotor, so that's good. We're looking pretty clean under here. Alright, these are our advanced weights, which are sticky as hell. So while I'm in here, I'm going to need to clean those up or else we'll try to set our initial timing and uh, you could potentially be out there, which means we have no timing advance, which is where all your power comes from. And we like power, so we're going to make sure these get cleaned up before we really try to run this motor. Corroded. Get my points file and clean those up. A little more aggressive than sandpaper, but hopefully that works. So as you can see, I can take my screwdriver and manually close those points and it lights that light up. So I'm going to keep cleaning those and we'll be back when those points are finally cooperating. So I was having one hell of a time getting this thing to get spark, by which I mean I was never able to, and something dawned on me. Uh, I noticed that right off screen here there's a bunch of burnt cables in this harness where something melted. Right now I have the positive feed for the coil disconnected and it has power. but there's two wires that connect to the positive stud on the coil. One of those is going to be a wire that's powered while the key is in the on position. It's only going to have 9 volts. That's your constant run power feed. The other one is going to have 12 volts when cranking and should be activated by the starter solenoid. If you notice, when I crank, that light turns off, which means that other wire is not working properly. So let's get that fixed or get a secondary feed set up and we should have spark. But. What'd you say? I said but. And oh, I stand by it. Oh, you stinky lady. <laughs> Alright, so what I have rigged up here is a switch that runs to a constant 12 volt source over there on the fender. And what it do is supply cranking power so that when the motor's cranking, it still has 12 volts, just like the solenoid's supposed to, but without all the melted and missing wires. I'm really short on time, so we're just gonna do this for today. 
And then when it's running, I can switch this off and move, if you want to turn the key on, it will have the six volts. So there's your running power, cranking power, running, cranking. It's probably one of the best uh, visual demonstrations I've actually set up for that, where you can see the difference in voltage between the two sources. All right. Spark. You can see this guy flashing and we have spark up here. So we have an ignition system that is working properly. Go ahead and put the cap and rotor back on, throw something down the intake and see if this thing makes some noise. Obviously there's no carburetor uh, and we're not going to be expecting this to run. I just want to hear it pop off to know that it can do that. So it's going to be like vroom, really high and fast and burn off all the fuel quickly. But sometimes it's, you know, that's, that's just, it's just what you got to do. I also have the car lifted off the ground right now. So in case it's in gear, it won't spin the tires and run me over. No one likes Kevin getting ran over. I don't remember if it's this way or this way. It's that way. Oh. That'll make things a little more reasonable. I don't think I've ever heard the word reasonable come out of your face. <laughs> That's probably fair. Oh, look who came out of the exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of dirt. Oh yeah. Stinks back here. Carburetor on the car now. It's been a wild day trying to get everything situated here. Um, I think it's moving fuel. I think it's holding fuel. I know we don't have an accelerator pump, but uh, I do see fuel leaking out of what's supposed to be our accelerator pump. So let's we'll see what happens. I'm still not showing anything on the oil pressure gauge, so that's my main concern. <laughs> hooked up it doesn't move I also don't see anything moving in this line so I don't know if that's actually a fuel issue or I mean an actual oil issue or if it's the gauge is all gummed up or something let's try it again we'll see if this little bubble right here moves I hear a lot of lifter noise so I don't know I could uh, disconnect the oil line and see. I've seen the, the pickup point down there will get clogged up with shit sometimes. Right. And it won't move past that. Especially if it's sat for a long time. Yeah. We disconnected our little standpipe for the sensor and the uh, plastic line. And cranked the motor over and watched. And nothing is coming out of the back of that pump right there. So there's a chance we're actually not moving oil, which means I am not going to run this engine anymore. 
Uh, ignition's off. We're gonna leave it that way. We're just gonna crank it a little bit here and there and see if we can get something figured out. Possibilities, uh, the oil pickup may have dropped into the pan, thus picking up no oil. Uh, the pump might have failed or maybe someone forgot the pump shaft on the distributor. You never know. Not a drop. I think you called it. I think the pickup. It's probably laying it's in the bottom. bottom thing, yeah. Well, that might just about do it for this week's video. Um, <laughs> until we get oil pressure, I'm not running this motor because we have a perfectly good rebuilt motor and I am not about to shell that out. I've already ran it more than I want to at this point, like about four times more than I want to. So, uh, yeah. I'll see if I can maybe get a bore scope in that oil pan somehow and we'll uh, see what we find. So we have our bore scope down the uh, oil dipstick fill hole. I have no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> I think what I could probably do is drop the oil and take a look through the drain hole when it's done draining. Let's try that. All right, let's see what we got in here. Well, it's oil, so that's a start. At least it's not water. Unfortunately, we have it, and it's not being pressurized is the issue. You gotta wonder, maybe all the rebuild parts that are over there unused are like, they put the motor together, fired it, and it didn't have oil pressure, so they ordered more parts to do it again. Or the motor hasn't been rebuilt, and it dropped pressure, and they're like, well, let's rebuild it. I, I don't know. And they parked it? I have the camera up in the oil pan, and I'm looking around, and there it is. <laughs> the pickup is still hooked up. So... I don't really know what to do with this information, to be honest. What the hell do we do now? Probably cry. You know what? You've had worse ideas. So have I, like buying an F-85. <laughs> I don't know why we don't have oil pressure. Uh, I unfortunately also do not have time to figure it out because it's Thursday night. I still have to edit this entire shit show and put it into a film and have it up tomorrow and I have to spend the entirety of tomorrow on the road going to southern Iowa to uh, film the next episode for next week and then immediately after this weekend we have another one and then another one so yeah we're uh this is a full time job by the way if you guys didn't know YouTube is might look like a cushy thing you do on the side no it's 16 hour days 7 days a week for us to produce content it's so. not a full time job it's 4 full time jobs <laughs> But we enjoy what we do. We really appreciate your guys' support for helping us make it happen and keeping the content right here without all the drama for free on YouTube. As for this car, uh, this is just one of those that we get and it kind of ends up just being a disappointment. I uh, really wish we could have got it running and driving and see if it's been hot rodded. Uh, the little it did run, it didn't really sound like I had a radical cam or anything, so. I think it was just mostly a rebuild. But uh, yeah, if anyone is in the market for an F85 that doesn't have any oil pressure for some reason I don't have time to figure out, shoot me an email at junkyarddicks1 at gmail.com. Actually, one more thing I want to throw in right here. Uh, I want to see in the comments, what do you guys think is wrong with this car where it's not building oil pressure? Now remember, it's not low oil pressure. It is zero oil movement. I'm sure this one will be in the comments a ton, small block Chevys, if the distributor's not installed, there's a port that needs blocked and you won't have oil pressure because you'll have oil movement out that hole bleeding off the pressure. But again, this is not no oil pressure, this is zero oil flow. If you guys know anything about these 215 V8s, let me know down in the comments because maybe, maybe we'll still take a second look at this. All right, back to what I was just saying. <sighs> Other than that though, this video was a bit of a shit show, so we apologize for that. But either way, if you would please consider subscribing, that'd be great. It helps support the channel so we can avoid more shit shows like this by maybe hiring on someone and having uh, a little more time to schedule stuff to be proper revivals. Angus, come back. <laughs> Kevin, leave that man alone. No, he's our only hope. <laughs> If you guys like this video, hit like, subscribe to Junkyard Mook and all of our friends. We'll see you guys right here next week.
for hopefully a much better episode of Junkyard Digs. Peace. Okay. It was only a shit show because I was here. <laughs> it's Matt's Matt, fault. Matt, that's a lie. <laughs> Blame Matt for this. Thanks, <laughs>